What's up everybody, Fritz here. What would happen if one day the BMWs that we love to work on and cherish were all of a sudden gone? Well, sadly enough, we'd be sad. But in today's video, we're gonna go over how we can actually save our hobbies and save our BMWs. Let's get into the video. That's right, the EPA is actually trying to fool you, thinking that they're only going after race cars, and superchargers, tunes, as well as exhaust systems. But as we're gonna go up in the office and find out really quick, that's not true. So now that we're back in the office, we can go over the deceptive language the Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, uses in their Clean Air Act in order to ban performance parts and prevent us from our passions of modifying our cars. And even if you're just a weekend warrior, somebody who's looking to save a little bit of money by doing the maintenance on your own car, you're gonna wanna stay tuned throughout this video because this also affects you. But if you're short on time and wanna get right into the action plan, Go ahead, hit the RPM link down in the description, sign it, that way you can let your elected officials know that you support the RPM Act and you wanna maintain the privilege of working on your own cars. And for those of you who wanna get into the nitty gritty of things, don't worry because we're gonna go over the deceptive language, but we're also gonna go over some action plans that we can do as a community as well as individuals to preserve our privilege to work on our cars. So with all that said, let's jump right into our first point which is when they said superchargers, tunes, and exhausts. The deceptive language is not actually highlighting these three terms, but highlighting the phrase just before, because they say performance parts such as superchargers, tunes, and exhaust, which means such as, but not limited to, which means if they're allowed to ban these three parts, who's to say later on that it won't go to four parts? five parts, six parts. And before you know it, it's all performance related parts. So that means our coilovers, our control arms. That means even our plastic charge pipes that we all fix on our BMWs to all metal ones to prevent them from cracking under boost. We wouldn't be able to do it. I mean, could you imagine a world in which we can upgrade our charge pipes and intercoolers to all metal versions? If it was really about clean air, then wouldn't they want us to upgrade to an all metal or silicone version and upgrade it only once versus having to go back to the dealer, buy these plastic parts again and again, and encourage the production of and disposal of plastic parts? Because that's pretty harmful to the environment, right? It's really about money, not about clean air. Because these government officials, although they're not the smartest, they're smart enough to know that the original manufacturer will make plastic parts like the charge pipes, intercoolers, turbo inlet pipes in order to save money. And this is relatively okay for their business model. But if you're a performance parts dealer, an aftermarket dealer, you're gonna wanna sell a higher quality item at a more competitive price point. Therefore, the tax revenue is less for the federal government. But us as the consumer love this because we get a higher quality part at a lower price point than OEM. But if these aftermarket dealers are banned, guess what? The regional dealer can raise the prices of their parts, and because they know that this part is gonna break, it's gonna increase the frequency. So that's gonna make the consumer buy a higher priced item more, which is a lower quality item than aftermarket. But the federal government doesn't care, because guess what? Their tax revenue per transaction goes up, as well as the frequency of that transaction. Don't believe me? Well, follow along, because I'm gonna illustrate a few more points here, which brings us to point number two. The EPA's use of race cars when they mention this. They want you to believe that it's all about making sure that race cars abide by the emission standards. And from a competitive standpoint, I guess it makes sense. Because if every race car has the same cat, they all have the same bottleneck, they all have the same issue. But when you look at how much time the race cars see track time, so the amount of time that they're on the road, compared to those same amount of cars that are daily driven, what emits more emissions? It's probably going to be the vehicle that is on the road for more time, which is probably a daily driven car. 
because you have to factor in that not every race is a long drawn out event. Some of these races like drag races last mere seconds. A lot of these performance cars, they're actually towed to the event and then towed out of the event. So really they're there at the event and then they wait until the next event in order to run again. And if it was really about race cars, then they would target only the teams that work on said race cars and say, hey, we're gonna set up a booth that makes sure that your car passes the emissions before each event. Therefore, the teams would have to make sure that the car abides by those standards. But instead, they're going after the companies that sell the performance parts. And imagine if you're one of these performance parts companies that you're no longer able to sell a high volume item like exhaust, a high profit margin item like a tune, as well as superchargers, what are you probably gonna do? You're gonna do one of three things. That is, you're probably gonna lay people off, you're going to source lower quality items, and you're going to increase the price of everything in your store. Now, of course, the companies are probably gonna do a combination of all three in order to reduce the effect of a reduction in staff, the quality that they wanna to provide to their customers, as well as the price hike that us, the consumers, have to take on. So that means for us, the consumer, we're paying more money for a lower quality item with less back-end support. But the federal government, they don't really care about that because guess what? More money means more tax revenue. See, I'm not just making it up. But let's get into our last deceptive point, which is their use of diesel engines. If this was really about race cars, why do they include diesel engines here? Diesel engines don't really make up the majority of race cars. In fact, they don't even make up majority of the cars on the road. Just look at your gas station, for example. Not every stall has a diesel pump. Heck, the gas station that I go to doesn't even service diesel engines at all. So that just goes to show that they make up a minority of the car population, although it is a very enthusiastic population. But I really think it's more about optics here. Because when you go to a racetrack, you see these race cars emit invisible gases, but when a diesel truck rolls cool, it looks bad. And it is, it's really not good for the environment. But are majority of the cars doing that? This goes back to my previous point in that there's not enough race cars to support the argument that we should have a performance parts ban. So they're trying to lump these two groups together of race car and diesel, but it's conflating two different points. It would be like saying to a bodybuilder, you're out of shape because you run a really slow five mile. It's really disingenuous to conflate race car and diesel engine, put them together and say, this is the reason why we should ban performance parts. They serve two entirely different goals. So don't put them together. But as I was saying before, I really think it's about optics because you can actually see the rolling coal. It's not at all about diesel engines because if it was, they would want to limit the use of diesel engines. Let me elaborate a little bit here. If they really wanted to eliminate or reduce as much as they can the use of diesel engines, why would the federal government cancel something like the Keystone Pipeline? The Keystone Pipeline is a pipeline from Canada to the US that allows us to bring in oil from Canada. No trucks, no ships. Not only that, the refining process is pretty strict when you compare it to overseas standards. Well, the federal government, they decided to cancel out the Keystone Pipeline, and in doing so, forced the US to import more oil overseas. So, for the same amount of fuel that we would burn from the Keystone Pipeline versus overseas, the overseas oil is actually emitting dirtier emissions into the air. Not only that, is that when they refine the oil, they're gonna have to transport it to a cargo ship, probably by a diesel truck. And then, when that cargo ship, which emits emissions, comes into the ports of the United States, it's gonna be put on, guess what? Diesel trucks. And then the diesel trucks are gonna to have to drive cross country in order to deliver that oil. So if it was even really about diesel engines, wouldn't they wanna keep the Keystone Pipeline versus having us bring in oil overseas, which is dirtier oil? It doesn't sound like it's really about clean air at all to me. Again, if you don't believe me, look at the gas prices. They went up. More money for the federal government. But hey, I could be wrong. If for some reason, having a pipeline on land is worse than transporting oil, dirtier oil I should say, 
over the ocean, please let me know. If there's a contamination in the ground, you just scoop up the soil, put it into a container, disinfect it. If there's a spill on the ocean, you're gonna have to transport several vessels over there in order just to clean it up. Not to mention all the wildlife in the ocean that's affected. But like I said, I could be wrong. So if somebody could educate me of the points of getting rid of the Keystone Pipeline and transporting oil overseas, please let me know. So the action items that we can take right now to preserve our privilege to work on our cars, one, sign the RPM Act down below. Two, you're gonna see a bunch of videos like this talking about the RPM Act and the EPA. I would encourage you to watch them all and share as much of them as you can because for the people out there who are going to support you, they're just gonna sign the RPM Act. If you come across somebody who gives you a counter view that I can address, share my video. But if you watch another video that addresses another topic, share their video. Because that's the only way that we can get enough signatures to the elected officials to make sure that our privileges are maintained. The other part that I think we can do together as a community is to promote the videos and DIYs better. And the way that we can do this is by sharing where we're from, if we need help on a specific DIY, or if we're the person who can give help on said DIY. So I encourage all of you, go to all my previous videos of DIYs, let people know where you're from, if you need help, or if you're the person who can give help in a specific area. Because we're not a certified specialist, but maybe we have just enough information to help each other out, we don't need to charge a premium price to get a job done. Or it could be something along the lines of, I help you out with the sway bars and you help me out with the charge pipe. A job for a job. Which brings me to the last point of something that I can do better. I've been getting a lot of questions recently about how to start a car channel on YouTube. And I think at this point, I have enough experience to share that information. So the gear that's necessary, as well as some of the backend support that I have for this channel, which is why if you're somebody who is thinking about doing this, I really wanna encourage you to do it. Not just because of the monetary reason, but we really need to build out this community. Even if you have the same BMW as a lot of other people, even if you see charge pipe videos on end, I encourage you, make the same charge pipe video on your car. The reason why is because somebody who's researching how to do this job on their own is trying to paint a 3D image of their mind of what this job truly looks like. So maybe I had really good camera angle in one segment, but my lighting wasn't good. You could do a better job than me. I encourage you, watch all the videos on charge pipes, intercoolers, you name it, watch it all. Find out the trouble spot in each video and do better there. That's how we can grow the community. That's how we can make it better. So I definitely encourage anybody who's thinking about making a car YouTube channel, go ahead and do it. I would love to see a bunch of us come together, collaborate, and just help the community out. That's what I really want. And that's what I think we all want here when we're working together. So this is the best thing that we can do in the community. We need to grow and help one another. Not complain about what the EPA is doing with the Clean Air Act, but be cognizant of the world around us. That way we know how to combat it. What we really need to do is sign that RPM Act. Link is gonna be down in the description. Comment in this video, let people know where you're from, if you need help, if you can help. That way we can really grow out this community, like this video, subscribe to the channel, share this video. That way we can continue to grow, improve, and maintain our privileges to build cool shit.